Today we were showing you how to assess vital signs. Vital signs consist of blood pressure, heart rate, and breathing rate. We will now show you how to do this. One of the first steps uh, in obtaining vital signs from a patient is to get patient consent. Chandler? Hi, I'm Anthony. I'm a PTA student. I'm going to be getting your vital signs today. Is that okay? Yep. All right. What are you reading there? Feeling good? I don't know. No? When you're doing vital signs, you need the correct equipment. When you're doing blood pressure, as Anthony will be doing first, you need a quality stethoscope, an appropriately sized blood pressure cuff, and blood pressure measuring instrument. Sterilization of the equipment is most important, so as to not communicate disease. Next step is to prepare the patient. Make sure the patient is relaxed by lying around five minutes to relax before the first reading. The patient should sit upright with their proper arm position so it's level with their heart and uh, feet flat on the floor. Remove excess clothing that might be, be that might interfere with the blood pressure cuff or constrict blood flow in the arm. And the patient refrain from talking during the reading. After placing the cuff on the patient's arm, you palpate and locate the brachial artery position under the blood pressure cuff so that the artery marker points to the brachial artery and wrap the cuff snugly around the arm. Position the stethoscope on the same arm that you place the blood pressure cuff. Palpate the arm at the antecubical fossa crease of the arm to locate the strongest pulse sounds and place the bell of the stethoscope over the brachial artery at this location. Inflate the cuff and begin pumping the cuff bulb as you listen to the pulse sounds. When the BP cuff is inflated enough to stop blood flow, you should hear no sounds through the stethoscope. The gauge should read 30 to 40 above the person's normal BP reading. If this value is unknown, you can inflate the cuff to 160 to 180. If pulse sounds are heard right away, inflate the, to a higher pressure. Slowly deflate the blood pressure cuff. Begin deflation. The AHA re recommends that the pressure should fall at least two to three mmHg per second. Anything faster may likely result in inaccurate measurement. Listen for the systolic reading. The first occurrence of rhythmic sounds heard as blood begins to flow through the artery is the patient's systolic pressure. This may resemble a tapping noise at first. Listen for the diastolic reading. Continue to listen as the blood pressure cuff drops and the sounds fade. Note the gauge reading when the rhythmic sounds stop. This will be the diastolic reading. And double check for accuracy. That was pretty good. That's good, Chandler. I had you at uh, 119 over 82. All right, Chandler, now I'm going to get your pulse rate. Is that okay? No. Okay. Go ahead and put your wrist Step right one. On use your fingers when finding the pulse. Do not use your thumb when finding it, as it has its own pulse. Find the radial pulse. This is known as the pulse on the inside of your wrist. Use the pad of two fingers. Place them just below the wrist crease at the base of the thumb. Press slightly until you feel a pulse which is the blood pumping under your fingers. If necessary, move your fingers around until you feel the pulse. Step two, check and record your heart rate. Use a watch or a clock with a second hand. Make a note of the rate of the pulse, which is the number of beats per minute. If you do not have a watch or a clock, you can use the Cleveland Clinic Health System records and count the beats for 15 seconds and multiply it by four to get your heart rate per minute. Your pulse is beats in 15 seconds times four equals your heart rate. You can do beats for 30 seconds and multiply that by two. Step three, determine your normal heart rate. For adults, normal heart rate is 60 to 100 beats per minute. For children under the age of 18, normal heart rate is 70 to 100 beats per minute. Okay Chandler, so I had 30 beats per minute at 30 seconds multiplied by two that gives you a heart rate of 60 beats per minute. Pretty good. 
All right, Chandler, now I'm gonna get your respiration ready if you wanna just scoot forward for me a little bit. Just kind of put your arms out there. Just get comfortable here. I'll place my arm on your back. The first thing to do is to record how many breaths the person is taking in a minute. Watch the rise and fall of the person's chest cavity. Count this rise and fall for a full minute. This is what is calculated as RR or respiratory rate. In newborns, it's 40 to 45 breaths a minute. In infants, it's 20 to 40 breaths a minute. Older kids, 16 to 25 breaths a minute. And in adults, it's 12 to 20 breaths in one minute. All right, so I got four of them in uh, 15 seconds. So that's gonna put you at 16 in one minute. Now we've shown you how to take vital signs in a clinical setting. Always remember to properly sanitize your hands before dealing with patients. All right, guys, well, that's it. We hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, don't forget to like the video below and uh, hit subscribe. Today we will be showing you how to assess vital signs. <laughs> well, here, I'll place my arm on your back. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. uh, you can't lay down. That's it. Thank you for watching, and now we have shown you how to do vital signs in a clinical setting. Remember to do all of those down. <laughs> now we've shown you how to do. <laughs> now we've shown you how to take vital signs in a clinical setting. Always remember to properly sanitize your hands before dealing with patients. What? <laughs> now we've shown you how to take vital signs in a clinical setting. Remember to properly wash your hands before dealing with patients. All right, guys, we hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe, link below, hit like. Peace out. I just said peace out. We got to redo that. <laughs> the first step in obtaining vital signs from a patient is to obtain consent. Chandler? Dude, what the f? You think you're at home or something? You got my book here? What, what is this? What the f is this? Wait, get this around your neck. Get your foot off my desk. Matter of fact, get the f out of here. Leave. I'm not dealing with you today. The first step in obtaining vital signs.